Floss Tube friends. My name is Chris. Welcome to my channel. Um, today I am doing something a little bit different. I am doing a Floss Tube Extra, if you will. Uh, it's not my normal monthly recap. I'll just shoot that video in a couple of weeks, but um, while things were still a little bit fresh, I wanted to give you a recap on my experience at the Stitch North Retreat. I know a number of people already put out um, recap videos, but I often think it's fun to get everybody, you know, different different experiences, different perspectives. So um, I'm going to share my experience with you. Um, first off, I do want to apologize in advance if I forget anyone or anything. There's a lot of stuff that went on that weekend, but um, it was a wonderful weekend. I had so much fun, um, met so many great people, um, got a chance to visit with people that um, I had met previously, and yeah, you know, it was just just an amazing experience. Uh, I was so thrilled that I was able to meet up with my friends that I had met at the Hidden Stitchers Retreat earlier in March. Um, we actually ended up sitting together at a table, and that was great because we already knew each other. We already had friends, um, but it just allowed us to get to know each other even better, and um, I just really, really enjoyed that part of the experience. I also got to meet, um, and forgive me if I'm looking down, but I have some notes down here, but... Um, I also had an opportunity to meet some uh, more floss tube friends, some floss tubers, who I have interacted with a little bit on social media, or maybe met um, a couple of them briefly at uh, the Hamilton Stitch Inn that um, Kim, Crafty Kim, uh, was hosting prior to COVID. And she's actually just going to start hosting again, so that's pretty exciting. Um, so yeah, I got I got to meet a few a few of those people. There's Crafty Kim. There was Amanda, Lucky Chance Stitcher, um, Allison, and um, Jennifer from the Stitching Social. I actually got to meet their mom too. Um, so yeah, I got to meet lots of lots of people that I've interacted with that way in person in real life. Got to meet you know a couple of my uh, floss tube idols. So obviously Caroline is one of my floss tube idols. <laughs> um, I have a lot of floss tube idols, but I'll just mention a few that I met there. Um, I actually got to meet Ellen Reed. That was quite an experience. Um, and um, her friend Ryan was there as well, so that was fun. And um, and then Shiloh, Shiloh from um, Nova Scotia. She is um, stitching MD, I think, on Instagram down below if you want to check out their floss tube channels. Um, I got to meet her the the one evening too, um, and have a little chat with her. So, um, really fun experience that way um, to meet those people. And then of course, yes, there was the um, the Evertotes team. So Caroline. Um, Hannah and Matt I got to meet Carrie, who is the dyer for Leo and Roxy. Um, you know, met John briefly. Didn't didn't really introduce myself, but he was helping out um, at check in, so that was fun um, to to meet him as well. And then, um, of course, there was you guys because a lot of you were there as well. Uh, you know, it was really fun. There were some people that were customers of my Etsy shop that had purchased stuff um, from me that had came up and showed me their bags that they'd bought. And that was really, really sweet and really fun. And a number of you who are longtime viewers who have watched me for a while um, found me and introduced yourselves. And some newer people that just discovered me through the Stitch North uh, Facebook group came up and introduced yourselves. And I can't thank you enough, you guys, because that was just such an experience to meet people that um, had such kind things to say and, uh, we're just, you know, really, really, uh, just a really amazing experience. So I thank everybody that came up and introduced yourselves, told me how you, how you knew me and, um, had such nice things to say. I really appreciate that. It means a lot. So, so yeah, that was probably the best part of the retreat is the people meeting the people, hanging out with the people, stitching with the people, hanging with the people that get why you love what you do sort of thing. So that's one of the great things about retreats. So I think what I'm gonna do next is kind of break down how my weekend kind of unfolded and highlight some different things along the way. Uh, I'm not sure how long this video is gonna be. I may post it as a standalone video if it's a little on the longer side. If it ends up being short, because I have no idea how long it take. If it ends up being short, I might just insert it into my um, April wrap up video at the end of the month. But you guys will know because you'll be watching it. So, but let's see how we get along. Um, so, <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so my retreat started on the Thursday, on March 31st. Um, the actual retreat itself ran from April 1st to April 3rd, so Friday till Sunday. 
um, check-in started at 7.30 on Friday morning. So that's why I decided to go down on Thursday. It's a bit of a drive for me. It's it's between two, two and a half, or approximately two and a half hours from my house. So I didn't want to have to get up really early on Friday morning. So I booked my hotel room for the Thursday night as well. But so I kind of had that whole day. So I decided to take the opportunity to go down early and travel to a cross-stitch shop not too far from the hotel called Gita's. Um, they have a website. I'll link it down below if you want to check out their shop. They do um, have an online um, business as well as a brick and mortar, so you can certainly purchase through them. I had wanted to go down because there were some specialty fibers I was looking for for a kit. I'm trying to um, kit up as a future start. And um, I had seen that they carried a lot of those different fibers, uh, but I found some other things there too. So I thought I would start with showing you my haul um, that I got from Gita's. So a few of the specialty fiber fibers that I told you about, um, I got. So there were these Rainbow Gallery Splendor and Whisper fibers that I needed. And then this Krynik, uh Blending Filament. There were some others that they didn't have in stock. Surprise, surprise, a lot of stores are having troubles getting things. But they were so great and they took my name. They kept a running total as I was looking for things and couldn't find them. Go, oh, we'll put that on the list. Oh, we'll put that on the list. Um, so they're gonna phone me when they get those in and mail them out to me. So that was, that was great. So while I was there, one of the other things I really wanted to do was look at fabric because I, like a lot of people, I think find it hard to buy fabric online you know if it's fabric you've used before and you know what it looks like in person you know no issue but if you're trying to buy fabrics you've never seen in real life you know with monitors and stuff and cameras it sometimes just doesn't translate from what it looks like in real life to when you get it so I have had a couple of instances where I bought stuff online and got it and went oh I didn't know that's what, what it really looked like it looked different on the monitor so when I was there in person I really wanted to look at fabric so I did spend a lot of time looking at fabric um, and then struggled with making choices of what to buy. So I did settle on um, two pieces. Again, thinking about some projects I'm trying to I'm trying to kit up. So um, one of the ones is pretty boring, but I just got this 32 count um, antique white, antique white, yes, antique white um, linen. So it's just plain white linen. And then the other one I got is this vintage smoky white, again, 32 count. So it has sort of that modeling on it. And this is like uh, the vintage country mocha, like at the other side, it's printed. So it's not, it's not hand dyed, it's printed. So the other side is just blank. But I thought that was really cool and again, might work for one of the projects I'm thinking about kitting up. So that was the only fabric that I bought there. I'll show you some other fabric in a little bit. And then the other thing that I'd seen on their website that they had um, that I had been admiring online, but I know sometimes it can be tricky to find, um, is this Bothy thread skit. So Rendale Designs, Hannah Dale is the artist. And uh, yes, there's the kit. I am trying to decide if I'm just gonna use the kit fabric or I know some people will there's a linen, or a Lugana, I think it is, that you can purchase that has this speckling on it. Um, but I haven't decided yet what I'm gonna do. But uh, I just love that image. I love the donkey um, and those little robins. So I look forward to starting that in the future. So that was everything that I bought at um, Gita's. Uh, surprising I didn't have more because I was there for a while, but you know, stores like that, you just wander around and look at everything and absorb everything and pick things up and put things down and try and make decisions. And I knew I wanted to spread my spending out a little bit. So, so that was what I got there. Um, so that was Thursday, went from there, um, checked in at the hotel, uh, met up with some of my hidden stitcher friends and we went for supper. Um, then we sat in the lobby with a lot of other stitchers and did some stitching that, that evening. Um, and then when we started to break up a little bit, um, I ended up running into, um, some of the floss tubers I mentioned before, um, Amanda, Kim, uh, Jennifer, and Allison um, in the lobby. So I sat and chatted with them um, for a little bit before heading up for the night. So then Friday, Friday morning, the stitching room actually opened, I think at seven and registration was 7.30. So I was down there probably about 7.15. And um, 
yeah, first people I spied were my friends from Hidden Stitchers. So um, I sat at a table with them and then I did my registration and uh, picked up my loot bag or my swag bag um, after I registered. And uh, Caroline was registering us, so that was fun. I had to actually meet her in person and John was handing out the, uh, the loot bag. So that was a great way to start the day. Um, so I think I will show you what we got um, in our loot bags. Forgive me. I'm standing up because I have everything spread all over the table, so I just thought it might be a little bit easier, but I apologize if I keep ducking around a little bit. So our swag bags were actually these really nice just craft paper bags, but inside those we got these. So everyone that registered got one of these Evertote bags with a nice blue zipper on the top and the cream lining. And then in here, there were a number of goodies. One thing we got was a pattern. And forgive me, I forget. Oh, is it Hannah? Yes, so Hannah designed this. Hannah's little and the little stitch treats. And I believe Ellen, Ellen Reed from Maximum Power Cross Stitch Hour, I believe she stitched the model of this. Um, but we actually got the Leo and Roxy flosses to stitch that as well. Those are so pretty, so pretty. So that was in our swag bag. We also um, got a pattern from Tiny Modernist, I think. Different people got different ones, but this is the one that was in my bag. Um, and yeah, as I'm going through this, I'm gonna tell you who the vendors were because they all contributed to the swag bag. So um, Tiny Modernist was one of the vendors. She wasn't there on Friday, but she came on Saturday and Sunday. And she had a table full of um, a lot of her models and you know all of her patterns. Uh, she was pretty busy, I think, the whole time she was there. So it was so cool to see all of her um, stitch pieces, uh, all of our models, because they're all just beautiful. Um, so another vendor who received a lot of my money was Marlene from Pastime Pieces. She has a little um, shop that I think started more as a quilt shop and she has a lot of wool applique. I think she hand dyes wool for wool applique, but she's recently just started to get into cross stitching stuff and she had like phenomenal uh, setup. Uh, anything you could want uh, as far as patterns and fabric and um, like linens as well as sewing fabric because she had a lot of fat quarters and things that people could buy. So just phenomenal. She was very busy the whole weekend too. So in the swag bag she gave us this really cool um, corner gauge I think it's called um, to judge where to start your fabric or start your stitching on your fabric depending on how much of a border you want to leave around it. And then this really cute little pin with a little sheet on it that you could use on a finishing piece. Um, so Stitch Toolbox, Anna from Stitch Toolbox was a vendor. Um, she was there with um, a lot of her bags. She makes a lot of the Vinyl Front Project bags. Uh, she had like lots of other stuff though too. Like she had some patterns. She carries some Twin Peak Primitives patterns and she had like some scissors and some beautiful, beautiful scissor fobs um, and things like that. So um, this was what was in our swag bag from Anna is this little uh, needle minder, a maple leaf. Um, Rocky Mountain Needle Minders was there as well. Um, she is from, so yeah, it's Karen, I think. Yes, and I think she's from Alberta. Karen, well, Karen doesn't watch my videos, but um, I believe she's from Alberta. And um, so she was a vendor and she had a ton of, oh, like so many beautiful needle miners, but this is the one that came in my swag bag. We also got a pattern from Brennan Needle, um, a little piece of fabric to stitch it on with a needle. And uh, I think there was the floss as well, but I'm not sure where my floss has gone. I must have tucked it somewhere. So, but so that was nice. That all came like in a little box. And then the other vendor um, was K 
CanadianStitchery.com. So she included those little tags and these little these little pins. And she was there on the Friday, but I think she wasn't there on Saturday and Sunday because um, there was a, a big sort of craft event happening in Toronto that same weekend called, I think it's one of a kind, maybe? And I think she was exhibiting there. Um, but she had a lot of really, well, you can, you can check out her, uh, her website if you want to. That's her website there. But she has a lot of like the wooden, you know, the wooden things that you can cross stitch on. Um, and she actually donated door prize, which was a map of Canada, which was really, really cool. But she had a ton of really adorable that, you know, could be ornaments or keychains or things like that, that were so sweet. So yeah, check her out. That's really cool. So that was, I believe, everything that was in my swag bag. And I apologize again if I've forgotten something that was in there. Um, so I'm going to just tuck this stuff out of the way. So, yeah, so that was most of um, most of Friday. Uh, you know, we just stitched and um, hung out, uh, went out for meals, you know, that type of thing. So then moving on to Saturday, of course, more stitching happened on Saturday. Um... And the other thing that happened on Saturday was the Smalls Exchange. And that was really fun. Uh, it was really cool the way they organized it and they did it. Like everybody that was going to contribute, because you didn't have to contribute if you didn't want to. But everybody that wanted to participate, you had wrapped your small and you're supposed to list on the outside whether it was more traditional or more modern. And then we just put them all on a table. And Hannah... Um, pick numbers because every table in the room had a number so we were table 25 so she randomly picked numbers went to that table anybody at that table that had contributed to the smalls exchange went and picked a small and just went back to their table worked really smoothly really quietly everybody you know went and picked picked up their their uh, surprise packages and went back and opened them up with great anticipation so mine Oh, and please forgive me. I'm going to put the name down here. Um, the stitcher that created this uh, beautiful, uh, small, hadn't signed her name. So I wasn't sure who she was. Now, some people had gone around the room trying to find the person that had made their small. But when I got home, I just posted a picture on the Stitch North Facebook group and thanked my stitcher because to let her know how much I care for it. And then she did identify her. She, she did identify herself. Um, so I'm going to put her name down below. Um, just to give her credit because uh, I can't believe how beautiful this is. So I'm going to show you first. So I think the guidelines were, so, you know, stitch something small, like a little pillow or a needle book or something like that. And, um, and then if you want to, you didn't have to, but if you wanted to include any little extras, then it shouldn't equal more than about $15, I think was the guideline, just so people didn't go crazy or some people didn't get gifts, you know, worth, $75 and other people just got a little needle book or something. So, so in with mine, um, there was this adorable little mini bag. It's got like a double zipper on it. Cute lining. Quilted on the back. And it has this logo. So I, I don't know if this is somebody that sells on Etsy. If anybody recognizes this logo, feel free to comment down below or if you you know if you made this or you know somebody who made this um, comment down below because I'd love to um, check out what else they have if they do sell and maybe maybe she made it herself I don't know I didn't even ask her that so but my small so the pattern is by modern folk embroidery it's stitched on 32 count heartland linen by picture this plus um, she stitched it with one strand of sulky thread so you ready isn't that cool oh I, I love the black I've never stitched a monotone piece and I've never stitched in black but this makes me so badly want to do that the backing fabric is perfect she's got this gorgeous little chenille trim that is so beautifully attached and um it's been stuffed with uh, walnut shells, so it's like it has a really nice weight to it, but gorgeous. I love it so much. So I was thrilled. I was thrilled. Um, so my small that I took, you had seen, if you watched my last video, I showed a little sneak peek, but I will put a picture in here 
of my small of what it looked like and um, sorry I'm just thinking about how I'm gonna do that because I have a couple pictures of it so hopefully I've just put them both up there and you, you've seen the front and the back sort of thing um, but yeah, one of my table mates, uh, one of my friends um, from the Hidden Stitchers retreat had seen me stitching on it at that retreat and had seen my sneak peek, I think, on Instagram. So she was working on a display she was making at home and thought that that little cat would be perfect for her display. So unbeknownst to me, when I put my small up there, she was watching where I, where I put it on the table and um, she was lucky enough that when we went up, it was still there and she was able to claim it. She was happy and I was happy that my kitty had a good home. I asked her to send me a picture once he got settled kind of thing. So anyway, so that was fun. The Smalls Exchange was a huge success. I think everybody enjoyed it. And I say it went really, really smoothly. It didn't take, you know, hours on end or anything like that. So um, kudos to the Evertote team. That was really well done. So let's see, anything else on Saturday? Um... So yeah, I did, I did do some shopping over the course of the weekend. So I will show you what I purchased from um, Pastime Pieces. Bear with me here. So I did buy one chart. This hello from Liz Matthews. This is part of her 12 Days of Christmas series. Um, this is the six day six Gisa lane but i just i just love this canada goose in these colors and i thought you know it kind of to me feels like it represents canada and stitch north was a canadian retreat so i just wanted this to be my um you know commemorative piece for the first stitch north retreat that i attended so um i'm looking forward to stitching that in the future um and then i bought some more fabric uh from marlene so I had purchased um, this Silvery Moon 32 count linen. Just sort of a, a, a gray, right? Always searching for a nice neutral um, for projects. And then I really wanted to try this r, &R Reproductions Patriots Brew. It's a 36 count, which I've never stitched on, but I do want to try stitching on 36 count. So I thought this was the opportune time to, to do that. So I could try both the R&R &R fabric, stitching on this color and on this count. Um, one other pattern that I didn't purchase, um, but it was part of a door prize. There are a lot of door prizes. Um, I think all the vendors donated door prizes. I think some of the attendees donated door prizes. One um, person that wasn't able to attend um, ended up donating uh, registration fees to two, two people. So those people that won that door prize um, basically got refunded their registration fees. But I know um, Anna from Stitching Toolbox had done a, a really nice big... Uh, uh, gift bag, you know, with a project bag and a pattern and uh, I think maybe the scissor fob. I forget what all was in there. But one of my table mates, Rachel. Hi, Rachel. Um, Rachel actually won the door prize. And um, she ended up deciding that this was a pattern she didn't think she would probably stitch. But it was one I had actually been eyeing up on Anna's website. And um, so we decided we would maybe pass it amongst the hidden stitchers. Um, so um, I ended up bringing it home first so it's you make all things new so it says April you make all things new but I'm thinking I might put spring in here but I just love those little bunnies and those little birds are just so adorable the flowers are so pretty and again this is a Twin Peak Primitives pattern so I want to get that stitched at some point so that I can pass that along to the next hidden stitcher that thinks they'd like to stitch it alrighty so I think that's most of what I wanted to cover on Saturday. Um, so then, yeah, um, Sunday. Sunday was our last day. We were only there for half a day. Um, so of course we spent the time chatting and stitching. Um, I did make a couple of more purchases um, from the, sorry, from the Evertote um, table. And of course I bought some more fabric because again, that was my goal. 
a lot of patterns, you know, it's not hard to buy those online because they are what they are, but the fabrics are what's the challenge. So, so I bought another piece of 36 count. This one I think doesn't have a name yet, but I think Carrie, um, the dyer, was saying they're probably going to carry it as a regular in their line. She was kind of calling it pistachio, but um, they were going to have to confer on that. So I think um, I was asking her how they come up with their names, and I think there's a little bit of a group, you know, discussion about it. But I think Hannah often comes up with a lot of the names. Carrie said she's that's, she's quite good at that. So so, but Carrie was calling this one pistachio that day. And then the other one that I got is called Peanut Brittle. Um, that other one, the pistachio is 36 and this is 32 count Peanut Brittle. It's a little bit more red. That's maybe a little bit more accurate. That's more brown. Anyway, it's a gorgeous, gorgeous color and I can't wait to stitch something on that. Um, so that was it as far as my purchases go. Um, a couple of things I've missed. One was um, some of my table mates actually bought, brought gifts uh, for people at the table. So my friend Wendy, um, who adopted my cat, <laughs> uh, made us these adorable little scissor pouches. So these work perfectly to put my, my scissors in and then I don't have to worry about them poking holes and things. And then um, my friend Jenny, um, she's Jenny McStitcher on YouTube and on Instagram. Um, and yay, Jenny just made a, a video. Um, she brought these adorable little needle, needle books. Her mom actually made them. Her mom is um, a quilter and her mom has gone to a lot of retreats and um, she told Jenny that, you know, you need to have gifts for your table mates. And Jenny's like, well, I don't have time to make gifts for my table mates. So her mom made these, which I thought was incredibly sweet. So thanks, Jenny's mom, for making us these little needle books. But yeah, so they just had, and then Jenny had these really cute little pins that we could put in there. Anyway, lots of little, lots of little felt pages to put your needles in. And these little pockets if you want to tuck something in there. But so adorable, so adorable. And then um, Jen, Jennifer from uh, Stitching Social had some um, gifts for her table mates and she actually gave me one. Um, and it's these adorable little chenille trims. Now Jen, I kept meaning to ask you, did you dye these yourself? Because the colors are really, really sweet. And they're very um, Eastery to me. But anyway, thank you, Jen. That was so sweet. So those were some gifts from the table mates. And I think the last thing I'm just gonna quickly show you, after we did the smalls exchange and they cleared all the gifts off, um, people brought stuff um, to give away. You know, just stuff that if they were cleaning out their, their stash and they just had stuff they knew they weren't gonna stitch or stuff they didn't need anymore, they just brought it and left it there. So I found a few interesting things and I just thought you guys might find it interesting too to see what kind of things you might find on a freebie table at a retreat. So forgive me as I lean over once more. So there were all kinds of things on that table um, and some random and unusual things. So one thing, I was very curious who brought them, why did they have the, all these um, things and were donating them, but um, there was a ton of thimbles, like dozens of um, thimbles, all different kinds, all different sizes, all different brands, but... I just like these ones um, because of their silvery nature and I don't usually use thimbles but I thought they looked like little flower pots. Anyway, I just thought they were sitting there and they were free and who knows. So I decided to take just one little package of them. The other interesting thing that there were multiples of were these cell phone cases. And you can see this is for an iPhone 4 or 4S. I actually own an iPhone 4S. I just recently switched to a Samsung because my 4S was a little bit unreliable, but it still works. And it's hard to find a case for it. Um, and so this case, you can actually cross stitch the back of it. And it comes with a number of different patterns that you can pick from, but you could easily 
stitch anything you wanted on there. So again, there's a number of them. They were free. I thought I'm gonna claim one, so so I did. There were um, a number of pieces of fabric, mostly Ada. I found that at StitchCon too. I think because of a lot a lot of people, um, if they graduate from Ada to linen, then they they just want to get rid of their Ada fabric because they're not going to use it. And I don't mind stitching on Ada, especially for full coverage product uh, projects. So this was just a sheet of, I think it's 18 count white Ada. I suspect it's like from a kit or something, but I'm always wanting 18 count white Ada. And then this one um, is a 15 by 18 piece Charles, Ca Charles Craft. Um, it's an 18 count. And I think it's a ivory maybe. Yeah, it's called ivory. So it's kind of a yellowy, creamy color. But again, an 18 count, which I like. But there's lots of other fabric that people claimed. Lots of like tubes of fabric like this. So. Um, and then I found this kit. You know me, I have a thing for kits. And I thought this was pretty. And it's a bell pull, and I've never stitched on a bell pull. So I thought that could be interesting. And um, it's something I can see my mother-in-law really liking. Because she loves birds and flowers and butterflies. Her gardens are always beautiful. Um, so yeah, it's the full kit, the fabric, it is like the bowl, bell pull shape, it's long and skinny, all the flosses, so I thought that might be fun. Um, and then there was just a few patterns that I picked up, so this is actually a pattern um, for like a hand towel, but again, how sweet is that with that bee and those flowers, like that could be a beautiful little small if you stitch that and made it like into a long... Like, you know a long skinny pillow or needle roll type thing but I just thought it was a really cute image and then there was this Margaret Sherry pattern I love Margaret Sherry art so I thought maybe maybe I might stitch that and then my big score I can't believe somebody put this on the freebie table and I'm not a sampler stitcher but I might be someday and I love Teresa Kogut artwork so, yes, you're seeing correctly. This is heaven and nature. What heaven and nature sing. I thought even again, if I, even if I don't stitch the sampler in the near future, there's so many little um, images in there you could pull out if you're going to make a small, or if you wanted to just stitch, you know, you could just stitch the bottom part, or you could just stitch the house type of thing. So... But yeah, so I was thrilled about that. So that's sort of my experience in a nutshell. If anybody has any questions about anything, feel free to um, ask me down below. Um, but yeah, I had a great time. I'm registered for next year. I've picked my weekend. And uh, yeah, can't wait to do it all again. So thank you again, Caroline and the Evertote team. Um, you know, for your first big retreat, I can't believe how smoothly everything ran. And uh, we all had a great time. So thank you so much. Okay, everybody. I'll see you next time. Uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks when I shoot my um, April wrap up. Um, at that time, I'll show you the projects I worked on while I was at retreat and all that sort of stuff. So thanks for stopping by. Bye. <music>
Thank you.